Great to be back. Um, I was here two years ago, and the basic line out of my talk was, you know, we can do anything, especially with this electronic stuff, be bold. And a teacher came up, uh, Debbie, and said, I really wanted to be bold, but I can't get laptops, and la 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 I said, what if we gave you all the laptops uh, for, a, for a class, scanned everything that was going to be taught in that class, put it on the laptops, and if you try to just use your laptops um, to, to see whether electronic uh, publishing worked, um, would this be great? And she said, yeah, let's do that. I wanted to see whether their administrator <laughs> would balk over having copyrighted materials uh, digitized and put on these things. Uh, and they looked the other way and we're on our way. The kids love it. They're still adjusting to it. These are basically farmer kids, migrant farmer kids. So it's, it's on its way. And if there are any other people want to try another couple classes, um, why, don't we, uh, why don't we try it? But today I want to talk about custom schooling. Custom schooling, what the heck's that? I don't know. It, it's a term we made up for classes that are between one and four kids in size. And it's really derived from, from a personal challenge that I had. I have a bright kid, um, but he was put, uh, he didn't quite settle into classes very well. He was good one on one, but uh, put him in a class and, he, and his behavior went to heck. And so um, they suggested he put him on Ritalin and it worked quite well. So we put him on Ritalin on second grade. And he's you know, getting A's, doing, doing just fine. But the schooling wasn't great. Um, it, there wasn't enough aca academics, really. So, and he turned into an avid birder, in that sort of obsessive way that a kid can do. And schooling was going fine, but it wasn't great. So I thought, OK, why don't we move him to another private school in San Francisco um, that would be more academically oriented. And it was a bit more academically oriented, but the kids made fun of him when he showed up in school with binoculars. So and I looked at it, the math that he was learning. It was, it was fractions again in sixth grade. It was just, it, there was this sort of averaging out in the classes that uh, I wasn't that happy with. When he got to know the other young birders around the country, they said the really good ones were homeschooled because I gave them the flexibility to become who they wanted uh, to be. And he said, please home homeschool me. But his mother and I didn't want to teach him. And we didn't really feel qualified to. But we knew two other families that had hired teachers around their kids. They'd made basically a small school around their kids. But this struck us as sort of too elite for words, right? I mean, I mean, if you can't even deal with public school and you go to private school and then you can't even deal with that, you make your own. But anyway, so, so we sort of pulled away from that. Um, but we said, all right, let's give it a shot. So we pulled him out of school, posted ads in Craigslist for teachers, and we were on our way. The, the responses on the ads were great. And in fact, we hired the English, and history, English history teacher that he would have had in the private school that we just pulled him out of, because she'd left the school for health reasons. And that was really helpful for me, because I wanted to get an idea, is this working? Right? So I wanted to know, if he was in seventh grade custom schooling, was he learning as much? So, what happened with that class is he started reading twice as much as an average seventh grader. And he didn't actually like reading before that. And now he loves reading, and he loves Shakespeare. And he loves Shakespeare so much that the teacher in here are going to Ashland this year to the Shakespeare Festival. This is one of the amazing things you can do with one-on-one -on -one education, is you can have real experiences. So when they were doing Steinbeck, they came down um, to uh, Cannery Row in Salinas and wrote poetry on the street and met with migrant uh, farmers. So the idea of being able to do that kind of customization worked really great. I taught him math for the first six months. I really wanted to read Euclid's elements. This is the essence of geometry, one of the beautiful things of, of the hum humankind. I mean, it's, it's the gem of the Greeks. So we read it in translation, but, but line for line, as it was written in 300 BC, he ate it up, we bonded more than we'd ever had before. And so it worked. So we hired a, a young mathematician um, to then take over, because I was working too much. And um, the young mathematician started to teach him more and more and faster and faster. And at 14 years old, I was looking at over his homework, and he was doing early trig. And I, was, I went to his math teacher, are, are you pushing him too hard? He said, I don't know. He seems to know a lot. Let's see what he can do. <laughs> and this is sort of a mathematician's way of thinking of it. He said, lots of 14-year-olds know calculus. Right? So can he do it? Right? Where is he? Um, and, and I loved that. 
And my son is really happy that later this year, when he's sort of later in eighth grade, he's going to start taking calculus. So I'm not saying that this kid is, I think he's bright, whatever. Um, but it's, I think it's the customization that really helped. Chinese. So it worked, um, Chinese, biology, physics, all worked in the same sort of way. Um, the Chinese young Taiwanese uh, woman that we hired, we clocked him against his, his, um, his private school peers, and he was doing better. But they could do more than that. She said, if you really want to understand Chinese, you have to understand rice. Got to love that. So she took him home and spent a whole day making rice and just learning what rice is. The teachers are loving it. My, my son is flying. Can't we do this for more kids? There are now two other families that have pulled their kids out of private school and are doing this. We're actually overlapping on the teachers, but it's still one-on-one -on -one education. And we're using some of the um, little rooms in this library that I work in um, as sort of a meeting spaces and really as therapy for the, for the parents to get used to the idea that they're not screwing up their kids. Um, and it's starting uh, to do well. But what about the finances? Is this sort of just something that the super elite can do? So I did out a paper, and I did out all the finances and all of our expenses, and down to exactly what we paid everybody and how much we were paying in private school. And it turned out that private school in San Francisco, we were getting 25% more teaching hours for my kid for 13% less cost. Let me repeat that. 25% more teaching hours, one-on-one, -on -one, and 13% less cost. What's not to love? There's a paper written in part of this paper by his teacher who taught in public, private, and tutoring. And now this is her first sort of teaching in private school. Because it's really teaching. It's not tutoring. They get to go and make their own curriculum. She said, one-on-one -on -one is the ideal, but I said, OK, no, no, let's stop the sentence there. If it's the ideal, why don't we do uh, that? So what about public school? So I did out some spreadsheets. If you take the cost that, uh, on average, in the United States, we spend on public school and have one administrator for every five teachers, give all the teachers, on average, a raise so that they're over, um, have the school year last 200 days rather than 180 and falling, and you spend all of your money on that, right? just the administrator and just the teachers. I realize that's not um, completely practical, but if you, you know, build in their, um, their, their benefits and that sort of thing, but just strip it down to that, you get a class size of four. I think everything is different if you have a class size of four. You, where you can teach, who can be teachers, you can have part-time teachers. Um, I think that this whole thing uh, could be quite amazing. So we're holding our first workshop on custom schooling in San Francisco on, on January 11th. There are little cards outside and, and upstairs. I think we may be on to something. So we're going to try to scale it up a bit to find out where does it work. Where does the socialization and other compliment, you know, complaints people have about different sorts of things, how does it work out? This is an early experiment. But for the finances of a public school, you can do one. Uh, for a private school, you can do one-on-one -on -one education. And for a public school uh, cost, we can do four, uh, one on four. When we went to a homeschooling conference, um, there was a session on Thomas Jefferson education. And my son said, I don't want a Thomas Jefferson education. I want an Alexander the Great education. <laughs> don't we all? Thank you very much. <laughs>